Reviver, le nouveau parfum pour un par Norton et Wilson. Parce que la vie est faite pour être appréciée. Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. So today we've got AC from the Smells Good channel again. Hello everybody. And AC, I just see that, that wasn't the, uh, the hello I wanted. <laughs> let's, let's try that again, please. AC. All right. Fellas, AC here. <laughs> I That's forgot my fair. own salutation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I insist that we have to have that on the, on the video. So uh, great I'm to have you on board, AC, uh, again <clears> for <throat> another video. So today um, we're going we're gonna to do a video about, uh, we're going to do a review of Hermes H24, the recent release from the House of Hermes. And then just to give us sort of a, a bit of a, a different thing to appeal to the viewers, I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat about does performance in fragrances matter? Because I, I think we might both have something of interest to say. So um, Hermes H24 released this year um, a new release from the House of Hermes, a great fragrance house. Yes, you, we've both got a sample. We've just got, both got samples. You've, you, I think you've got the official carded one. And I actually bought one from Fragrance Samples UK. Um, so I, I kind of have a little bit of a collaboration with them monthly, uh, but just to ah. show that I only collaborate with people that I genuinely would recommend. I, I didn't want to bother them for a free sample, so I did actually buy it at, at the normal price, just so people know that. So really, it is a good place to go for fragrance samples in, 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 yes. in the UK. Um, and so, yeah, we've both been trying this one out. I'll, I'll just I'll give viewers quickly the, the basic info about the fragrance. So it's an eau de toilette and a very simple short note listing, which is Clary Sage, metallic notes, narcissus, and palisander rosewood. And I was just looking for the perfumer, uh, which was... Um, Nagel, I think. Thank you, yes. Can you just say that again? Uh, yeah, sure. It's a new MS in-house perfumer called Christine Nagel. She's taken over from Jean-Claude Herna, I think, 2018. Right. Uh, Quite exciting. I've already reviewed one of her works, and that is Ted Emmer's O oh, Intense Vetiver. So, yeah, uh, nice. Oh, she did that, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sorry, right. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, interesting. Okay, so yeah, I wasn't aware of that, that ha having happened. So, of course, we're, many people will be aware that Jean Claude Eleanor was responsible for, for many mm. of the, the recent fragrance releases from them. And uh, so it looks like, yeah, she, she is the, the new head perfumer there so uh, yeah let's see what we both think about this one so i'm going to throw it i'm going to let you take charge a little bit on this one and, and uh, guide us through the review so where, where would you like to start on h24 from hermes uh, well thank you first of all that um mm. i think we'll follow a little structure so that people get an idea where we're going so let's start with describing the smell because i think that's what people like about my work where i am able to describe to them what I'm smelling so that people get an idea. So maybe it's a good area to start. What do you think? Let's do a spray and start. Yep. Okay, so I've got one. I just sprayed just before the review, so I'll stick with that. Okay. And if you, if you want to spray, I'll, I'll let you go first, if, if that's all right with you. Yeah, sure. So Nagel, Christine Nagel, she is a very exciting uh, personality. The work that she did with Thea de Maison Intense Vetiver was very impressive. I really liked because it was somebody else's work, Jean-Claude mm -hmm. Elena, and mm -hmm. she introduced Vetiver, which was already present in O Intense Vetiver. I want to start by reading what she says about this. Mm. H24, it says, a high-tech fougère, a fusion of three vegetal raw materials, enveloping sage, electric narcissus, and invigorating rosewood. Now, when I sprayed it, the first thing I got, and tell me if you get the same thing, it's, it's very electric, as if um, steam and electricity are mixing together. Not electricity, it will be short circuit. Steam and fabric. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. It's as if running your electric iron on your fabric, woolen fabric. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of feeling I got. It's very cold, steam, warm. Did you get that? Yes, definitely. Uh, I definitely agree with that that, uh, that, that description. I think I've uh, seen one or two other people mention the idea of, of freshly pressed clothes or the, the ironing kind of thing. It, 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 that pleasant kind of thing, sometimes it can be a very nice, comforting smell when you, you, you the, the iron hits the cotton and you get a kind of a nice, fresh 
smell. I like it. It's a good thing in a fragrance, uh, potentially. Uh, but yeah, like you say, maybe it's a different matter. Maybe if you if you go for a wool woolen jumper or uh, something like that, it gives a slightly more intense, different kind of smell. So it, it's it's an int intriguing smell. It's a non obvious sort of fragrance to be putting out. Actually, it's quite it's quite intriguing, and I definitely I found the opening quite enjoyable i really liked it it was kind of juicy and vibrant at the same time I, i'm sure there must be some a little bit of some citrus oil in there as well or something so i, I got a nice pleasant burst of that almost a, a hint of a, a pleasant sort of fresh sweetness mm. and uh, absolutely this this overwhelmingly kind of mineralic air about the fragrance or they mentioned metallic notes one other thing actually said sclerene which i think is the actual ingredient which i would assume is is the metallic element so yeah i agree with you with your description there i think yeah so when i was starting to do some research on this i read that christine nagel's grandmother used to be a tailor for gentlemen's clothes and mm -hmm. when she would visit her grandmother's house in switzerland uh, she used to live in geneva and Geneva is my favorite city. And really? Yeah, absolutely okay. love Geneva. <laughs> I worked there. Geneva is I, my favorite place. I didn't know that. Okay. But yeah, so she used to visit her grandmother who would live in Geneva in a flat upstairs. And she was, the memory she had of her grandmother was her ironing a gentleman's trousers. And that's what she wanted to recreate with the opening of this fragrance, which she has done, I must say. It creates an impression of a metallic, steamy, fabric-like smell, which is quite pleasant, but it has that smell of freshly ironed trouser or, um, uh, or clothing, not cotton, but woolen, definitely. Yeah, what do you okay. reckon? Yeah, so I that's agree. what you I, said. I, yeah, you're right. It's that kind of, uh, yeah, the wool. I think you're right about the wool thing. Yeah, it, as you say, maybe when something hot hits something cold or, uh, if you ever go out in the rain in a woolly jumper, sometimes that damp wool has a certain <laughs> smell. Uh, and I get a hint of that, but in, and I don't always enjoy that. But this is, is a good, good representation of that. So, yeah, I, it definitely fits that. And I didn't know the stories. So it's nice to actually have that story. And it's, yeah, once you get a good story like that about a fragrance, it makes you inclined to sort of like it a little bit more. So I'm glad yeah. I, I didn't know that. And that's, yeah. So, yes, she's, if that's what she was after, she's done a really good job there. It's good. She has. So mm. let's move to the next stage, the development. Yeah. Because you've tried it, I've tried it uh, as well. Yeah, I wore it all day yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Same here. Yeah. So what do you think of the development? Do you want me to walk you through the development that I faced? Yes, I would. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Okay. So this is where the love story ends for me, the opening. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Now, the one thing that was slightly uh, put off, I would say, and I have to be honest, is when the word was used, a high-tech fougere. I took an exception to it. Reason being, a fougere is a center, it's a, it's a category which was created for men back 100 years ago. Mm. When you put high-tech in front of something, the expectation goes up. And mm. how could you make scent high-tech? So it was a bit of a spiel. Yeah? Agreed. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things that you never do because you're not, technology is different, scent is different. Don't, mm. don't try to smart ass by saying, I'm sorry about the use of the word. <laughs> it's just, it is smart housing, isn't it? High tech, fougere, I mean, come on. It's a bit um, of a meaningless expression. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and fougere. So when you talk fougere, so fougere, lavender, or herbal notes, floral yeah. heart, and then woody um, sort of a experience, right? Hmm. So I was looking for that. And the development, yeah. when you start to develop, I saw that this is, there has a, it has a big narcotic floral, which is Narcissus. Mm. But somehow, all this beautiful thing that I'm getting at home just dissolves into sage oil. All I get get was right. herbal, persistent, sweet. Sorry, sage there's a fly oil. there, but sorry. It's all right. It's summertime, isn't it? Um, so that's what the middle was for me. It's a nice Narcissus, but it was overtaken by sage oil. And no lavender, no um, citruses. You're mm. calling something a fougere, I would expect a bit more lemoniness, a bit more lavender or herbal notes. So sage is a herb here, but sage overtakes narcissus and it behaves like sage oil. So if you put sage uh, oil, essential oil on your skin, mm. that's how it smells. It's very sweet, yeah. it gets very sweet. So that's, that's where I got that sweetness from then, yeah. Yeah, and sweet fougere, I mean, 
There's some good fougeres like we bought like this. <coughs> mm. Yeah, it's a perfect Lally. balance. Pour on. Yeah. Pour on, yeah. It's a perfect balance between citruses, lavender, floral heart, little tiny floral heart, and nice woods. There, yeah. There's none of that in this fougere. It's mm. mostly sage oil. So I thought to myself, this is the end of the romance. The first 15 minutes of that electricity yeah. or metallic thingy, it becomes, <coughs> excuse me, it becomes a very herbal, sweet um, sage oil to me. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree that the opening was the best bit. That's often the case, but often the next bit, I mean, inherently things tend to smell they give you that wow factor when you first spray them. But if you get a really good fragrance, then as it goes on, then other interesting things happen <laughs> and it's, it's still really good. But this one, yeah, didn't kind of um, hold my attention as much as time went along and it kind of dried down and, to, and developed, as you say, to, to slightly one-dimensional, kind of mm. crisp, pleasant, herbal, slightly mm. sweet, fresh. I kept kind of thinking, yeah, very nice fragrance just to wear to the office and that kind of thing. Uh, we, you know, but there are so many of those, and it was just a kind of a nice, crisp, everyday fragrance. I mean, it's it's not a really uh, generic fragrance that reminds no. you of loads of other things. It's not one of these sort of things that's a bit like Bleu de Chanel or mm. Dior's Eau Sauvage, that's a very sort of yeah. typical modern masculine fresh release. So at least they've tried to go in a, in a slightly unique direction and do something mm. interesting. Um, mm. But it, it just ends up being a sort of quite pleasant, affable quite you know quite classy and nice presented type of smell to, to put out for a man more or less of any age but mm. uh it's, it's just yeah a little bit underwhelming as, as time went along for me so that that mm. i agree with you yeah yeah uh, the word i used uh, and i was a little bit uh, uh <laughs> coy even cheeky on my instagram mm. i used a, a, a banksy's picture and it said boring <laughs> so <laughs> I, I saw lot. that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> One word I, review. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, it becomes very boring for me. Um, it is one-dimensional sage oil. And yep. uh, Narcissus, a little bit of Narcissus, a little bit. Yep. It, it's basically a fragrance that I would wear when I don't want to attract any attention on me. Mm, yeah. Nondescript. It, it's safe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not even anonymous, you know? <laughs> So, could, uh, yeah, yeah, it became, yeah, it was, it, I found it rather boring in the end. Um, yeah, I, I was not able to finish my official sample, I was no. able to finish about one ml. Right, um, normally, I would normally, if I really like something, I would finish this pretty quickly and get a five ml decant. All uh, right, just is that how you do it? A bit yeah. More. yeah, okay, I was not able to do that because it just didn't appeal to me. The first 15 yeah. minutes were amazing, the next, um. The heart and the and the base development mm. was pretty, yeah. So what? That kind of, uh, yeah. You know, I didn't I didn't see any point in H twenty four being released. I wouldn't have released this if I was Christine Ackle. I tell you what, because this looks like just sage oil, you know. Yeah. So, um, how about you? What's your last impression? Oh of the dear, yeah. Well, I agree. I'm afraid I say, I tend to agree. Yeah. There's. A, I I often just lately since we've been able to go out again and go to a cafe or whatever since the lockdown ended, I've I seem to have got into the habit of going to my local subway where they serve sandwiches. And the guy in there knows me, and he knows I'm into fragrances. So he tends to sort of if he if he's working, he'll hmm. lean over and rate my fragrance of the day. And sometimes I've, I've really, I, I sprayed a couple of strong ones and he was like, oh my God, you know, this is how he first mm. realized I was into fragrances. To be fair, sometimes I have the fragrance with me and spray a couple on just before I arrive. Mm. Um, on this occasion, I hadn't. But he was definitely like, oh, are you wearing anything today? I can't really smell it. Uh, which is fine because we'll, we'll come on to this. This is why I wanted to talk about performance because this made me think about performance because maybe mm. you don't actually want to walk, walk into your sandwich shop and the guy behind the thing can smell. It's got to be quite strong if he can smell you over all the meatballs that they're going to put in the sandwich. <laughs> so it's not yes. a bad thing, but he, he definitely couldn't necessarily pick up. And then when he did kind of lean in, he said, oh, yeah, he was very much, yeah, it's quite nice, but it, it it's he said it, it smells quite mature. 
and mm. um, he, he wasn't. He was. He was like me. He he wasn't going. Wow, that smells really good. It, it was mm. just that's quite nice. Yeah, not bad. So it's it's that kind of feeling for me. I'm afraid it's uh, an okay opening. Um, I guess the big thing that I thought, because I thought, what shall I say if we conclude <coughs> our thoughts when I do the review with AC, is when you think about some of the great, re reasonably recent fragrances from Ter Dermes, e.g., uh, sorry, from Hermes, e.g., Ter Dermes, mm. or if you want it like a more fresh one, mm. uh, Ter Dermes uh, Eau Très Fresh, which I know yeah. you're a fan of, you put it on your Instagram. Massive. Or if you go, you go back to some of their older classics, Rocker Bar and Equipage, oh, you can still get today. Yeah. Would this stand up <clears> against <throat> those? Will people still be talking about it as a modern classic in 10 years? I kind of doubt it. So that, I, that is my conclusion. I agree. I agree. The, as I said, you know, I, the question that crossed my mind was, knowing what you did with Owen Tens Vetula, mm. why did you release it? Because it looks like it's unfinished. There's no effort to make... Uh, a homogeneous transition. It's just smelling like sage oil, as I said, a sweet sage oil mm. with some floral aspects. So yeah, I'm very similar to your final take, as in, will this be, uh, there's a lot of hype around this, and will mm. this be remembered? I don't think, past this year, I can't see anybody talking about H24 with uh, a lot of excitement. It's not exciting. No. That's the thing. It's pretty boring to me. Yeah. And that's that's never a good thing. So yeah, do do you know why it's called? I'm afraid I didn't research this. Why is it called H24? Is the MS base address in France? Um, oh okay. Twenty four is the door number. Can't oh, twenty four Faubourg. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So MS H24. That's the reason. Okay. Gone for this. I like the bottle design. It's pretty. Everything about this fragrance is brilliant, apart from the scent itself. The story is yeah. lovely. Yeah, nice story. Packaging is yep. beautiful. A lot of yep. hype. Okay. You're getting full page articles from Fragrantica. Yeah. Every, you know, all the reviewers who review fragrance on the very first day that the fragrance is released. Uh, yeah. They're, they're hyping it. So everything is going yeah. for this fragrance apart from the actual scent. Yeah. And I think me and you pride on the fact of being honest and correct. So, yeah. If you did an honest review, you would say that this is pretty unimpressive, bearing in mind what MS is capable of. Yes. You know? yes. As you said, Autre Fraiche, then Bellamy Vetiva, Rocaba. They mm. have a history of creating amazing green Fougere uh, and cheaper fusions. They have yep. amazing fragrances. So this fragrance. Why would you pick? Why would you pick this one? Yeah. Yeah. Unless Doesn't you have, to, unless you're really excited and you want new things, new releases. But mm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. I'm. I don't look at it. I don't because I'm not like you. I don't always rush out and think I've got to get a review up of every new release because yeah. um, it's what's it's about what's good and classic and uh, really really exciting to me. Yeah, and just because something's new. It doesn't make me want to want to wear it more than something that's been out ten years. So yeah, I agree with you basically. Um, Mark, I guess I don't always give marks out of ten, but I think it could be fun. I, I, shall, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, and then I'll start Before you do, more. can I interrupt yeah. you for a second? Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Before you do, let's do the age group seasons. I'll go on then. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I, let's give them a full picture, everybody. All so, right. age group. Who do you think this is ideal for? Pretty much anyone, but I think that it won't. There's nothing to pull in the younger people who want something exciting or similar to what their friends are. So I would suggest more the 30 upwards crowd will perhaps gravitate, be the most likely. Spot on. Fully agree. agree. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Sexes. Do you think this has got any sex? Male, female? I imagine it's aimed at men, but that's actually pretty gender neutral, I would say. Yeah. This would smell really well on a business lady. 35 plus. Yeah. Who dresses on a, in a suit on a, on a spring morning. I think this will yeah. smell better than on a man. I might do, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. I just got the feeling that this has got this power woman kind of a feel to it. Yeah, yeah. Narcissus is not on a man's flower, but here, combined with sage and that sweetness, it's coming off as a little bit leaning feminine. Yeah, now that I picture a woman wearing it, it sort of, it feels pretty appropriate, I must say, yeah. Yeah. A business suit on a powerful woman who makes lovely, not lovely, but strong decisions. Businesswoman. 
I yeah. think it was sometimes more than a man. I think this is what mm. the picture in my head is. Interesting point. Yeah. Okay. So, you were, are you saying unisex or leaning feminine? I think so. I'm saying unisex leaning feminine. Okay. I'm going to go straight Narcissus. down. The, go on. Yeah, the narcissus. Yeah. Yeah, that flower is bringing this fragrance in the female territory to me. Okay. I'm going anyway. to say, I'll just say unisex down the middle, but certainly, yeah, and anyone can okay. wear it gender wise, yeah. Okay. So we've done age groups, we've done, se uh, have we done seasons now? Okay. What season do you think is right for this fragrance? I definitely think <coughs> you can, I definitely think you can wear it all year round, but mm. it, it's um, a perfect kind of spring or, or summer scent. It, it mm. leans a bit more towards spring and summer. But I, I mean, I personally never think it's a why shouldn't you smell fresh in January mm. when it's cold anyway? But yes, yeah, so, yeah. so spring, springtime, summer would perhaps be people's favourite time for this one. I agree. I agree. Uh, spring probably is the best time. Spring, spring, spring. because it's quite green. It's green, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is green, very herbal. Mm. Okay. So we've done seasons. Okay. Performance. How much do you think is performed on you? I would class this as the very much in the average category. So it's not particularly strong, uh, mm. but it's, it, I wasn't particularly upset that it was disappointing. So I, I would call it average, mm. but yeah, terms, if, if, yeah. If for any, anyone looking for a really, you know, who really demands performance will may mm. well be disappointed. I agree. I'm getting good longevity. So I put it under mm. my shirt, Went to bed, woke up next yeah. morning, it was pumping out very strong under my ah, t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. Maybe because yeah. I was under a duvet and there was no evaporation. So I'd say mm. longevity is decent. Okay. Uh, projection, projection is average on me. Mm, mm. Um, arms length to a skin yeah. scent within within an hour. Yeah. Uh, uh, Siage, uh, I, I would say medium. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, that's, it's, it's, it's a decent kind of performance. So. Yeah. Yeah. What about well, the value for money? Um, 80 pounds for 100 and more. Now, the thing is there, so it's a standard kind of device, designer price. It's, it's not one of the cheaper end of, the, you know, sometimes you get quite affordable mm. brands. So it's, it's a pretty, mm. you know, it's right up there with a the Chanel or something. Um, yeah, there's so much more fun to be had for your money for eighty pounds. You can get so much more exciting and unique things that is not great value for money, in my humble opinion. I agree with you. Uh, for eighty quid, I could get Bou de Jura, fantastic Fougère. Wow, yeah, brilliant. Tom Ford, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good Ford point. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I could get Lali Couron for twenty quid. Yeah, very, very nice Fougère. Um, I don't have any other fougers. Oh, yeah, I could get a green fougier, Chanel, yeah. Latin Amigoist. Yeah, it's that's got a bit more to it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. This is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. So there, there's too much competition, and you have to do something spectacular to charge that kind of money. If you look on eBay, you could probably get it for 60 quid. But yeah. for 60 pounds. Even yeah. even for sixty pounds, I wouldn't bother. So yeah, for me, the value for money is low. All right, have to agree with you there. Yep. Yeah, it's just sage oil. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can, I wish my knowledge of notes was better than you, but I'm not disagreeing with the sage oil thing. But I did, I didn't notice that it was specifically just that smell. But I, that's because I never, I, I never claimed to be technically good. But yeah, it, it's it's a, certainly. It's, it's slightly one-dimensional smelling, yeah, in, in a, an entirely pleasant way, but not exciting. It is pleasant, yes. As yeah. I said, nice but, nice but boring. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably it, yeah. Uh, was there another category? Do you, do you do occasions or...? I think occasions, yes. Let's do occasions. I think daytime office wear is it's the same scent. So exactly. daytime office wear. That would be the ideal occasion. I yeah. just go, but yeah, just every day. Yes, it's, it, I, I doubt that you would pick it if you had a few fragrances as your special occasion night out scent. It wouldn't be wrong, but if you wanted to make an impression, probably you, you would go for something more fun. So yeah, just a good safe scent for the office. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, master ten, buddy. I'm gonna go six. I I I, I copy six. Okay. 
I think I knew, yeah, we, we're definitely in about that. So it's a perfectly pleasant, but with so many other options out there, yeah, uh, unlikely that we would recommend anyone to rush out and buy it. Exactly. Sample it, see if it works for you, yeah. see if you like it. Yeah. If you do like it, nothing against you, but we'll go with what we think. Um, yeah. And it is 6 out yes. of 10. Agree with you on that one, yeah. And of course, there's always a chance we do give our best attempt to sample things properly. But perhaps if you had a full bottle and you kept wearing it for weeks and weeks, you could grow to find that it, it works for you a bit better. Yeah. So, you know, this is our, our, our best assessment, but not based on wearing it every day for a year or anything like that. So you never know. But yeah, I, I would imagine uh, we, we're on the same page here with our overall summary. Brilliant. I enjoyed I, doing this with you, Dan. It was so yeah. easy. <laughs> I think, yeah, the only thing that's disappointing is that we we tended to agree. So hopefully next time I'll get you. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd like to like disagree a bit more. But well, yeah, this I think, one was I, a little... I think it would be well, very difficult to disagree because we have similar tastes. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You never know, though. We might have something that... that yeah. I have, a few, I have a few guilty pleasure fragrances that you might think All are right. not good or whatever. We'll see All what right. we can come up with. All right, right. but you won't Just, have to get Jeremy in, so if you, have, if you want to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I would... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try. I don't think that's... Uh, can't see him agreeing to that, but I will try, yeah. <laughs> All right. Lovely Let's guy. Um Last but not least, and I just wanted to do a little bit on the, because that, that guy saying that to me, uh, or the, when he, the guy in, in Subway sort of couldn't smell it too much, I thought, oh, that yeah. means that I'm going to have to say in my review that it's not the greatest in performance. Mm. But then I thought, well, hang on a minute, you know, that's maybe that's not a bad thing. That, you know, it does, do you want to be smelled by people all the time mm. really strongly? So just, you know, I think this is an average performing fragrance. If people are into performance and it's a big deal to them, they might write in their fragrance review on Fragrantica, oh, you know, it was gone in an hour. No one could smell it on me, blah, blah, blah. blah. But my view definitely, although I do fun mm. videos sometimes about beast mode fragrances and I kind of find it yeah. a bit of a, it's kind of fun if a fragrance is really strong. I, I There can be something good about that. But yeah. What are your thoughts on, on the issue of performance? Because I find some people, when they're talking about fragrances, mm. uh, it feels like it's almost like top of their list of priorities. And I yeah. can get a, a bit annoying when someone says, if I post something on Instagram and they say, what's performance like? Or nice fragrance but didn't perform for me. And you just think, mm. well, uh, I don't know. It, it, I feel some people sample things in a small sampler, spray it twice on their hand, and then to decide it was gone in an hour. Mm. And that's they write the fragrance off. So, and also, sometimes I want to be smelled strongly, but a lot of the time in life, I don't. And it wouldn't be appropriate to be to be beasting out a strong smell. It could be quite annoying. So, mm. I'm I'm coming to the view that it's more important that a, sm a fragrance is really, really beautiful and good. Mm. And if that's the case, then I don't mind uh, perhaps it being more of a personal scent around me. Or if I really would like to be smelled a bit more. I'll just spray a bit more, or maybe I'll get a little atomizer. You can easily buy 10 of these very cheaply and put some fragrances in and take it out with you. If you're going out for the night out, then, you know, after a couple of hours, you can always spray a bit more. So what do you mm -hmm. think about this? How important to you is the performance on a fragrance? Sure. I think that's a great question. So let me break it down in, in a sort of an analytical way. This, this is how I see it, right? Yeah. So performance is very important for certain type of people. So people mm. who interact in groups, who move in groups, who stay and work in groups, mm. they want the attention of the others. So it's very important to them. Youngsters, for example, they, it is very important to them, and rightly so, because they want to, uh, others to smell their fragrances. <clears throat> Extrovert people, people who really are... Uh, who want to who want the whole world to see their fashion statement and their smell it's important to them and i understand mm. those are the people who overspray as well and absolutely fine that's a personality which is mm. there and i mm. fully subscribe yeah those are the people it's their requirement and I, i'm fully behind them no problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. personally most of the times i'm in a professional setting mm. and i can't afford to thrust my fragrance onto my customer or my peers mm. or, or my colleagues. I think it's impolite in a professional setting. Mm. I myself don't like it, so I wouldn't want others to be subjected to that. So yeah. that's my personal uh, yeah. opinion. 
Personally, I don't like uh, a fragrance to project more than half an arm's length for more than two or three hours. I would mm. prefer it to sit close to my skin so that I get wafts of it. I really, I really like high quality scents because they have tremendous sillage. So I put yep. one or two under my shirt and when I move, I get a little whiff of my own scent and I'm, I'm very satisfied with that. So that's personal opinion, but I also understand some people have a requirement to project and rightly so because it's their personality mm -hmm. and there's a place for that. So that's mm -hmm. my opinion. I'll give you two examples, right? Let mm -hmm. me give you two examples. This fragrance is absolute favorite of mine. It's Eau Decade by L'Occitane. It's a dis discontinued fragrance. If you smell this fragrance, it's basically a, f a fusion between fougere and oriental. So right. uh, we call this oriental fougere. And it has a beautiful note of immortal at the top and juniper berries or cade oil in the base. Sounds it's a, good. Just, yeah, it's a stunning, stunning fragrance, mm. but it doesn't have a huge amount of projection or performance. Mm. So I put two under my shirt and on a warm autumn day, I love it to bits. It's a 10 out of 10 fragrance for me. But mm. a lot of people don't talk about this fragrance because the performance is really awful. Mm -hmm. The other example I'd give you is this, Oh Try Fresh. Now, mm -hmm. one of the most amazing uh, photorealistic notes of orange. But a lot of people complained about the performance. Mm -hmm. Longevity is brilliant on me. It lasts about six hours, seven hours. Yeah. I love it to bits. This fragrance yeah. is stunning, you know? Yeah. So for me, it's quite all right. For some people, this may not mm -hmm. be adequate. Okay. And I fully understand. But I yeah. do mention that in my reviews because it's it's fair to you know just tell them that if you're looking for a complete crowd puller mm -hmm. uh, don't go anywhere near it because it won't give you give you the kind of yeah thing. yeah so that's my I, take long answer. i i agree <clears throat> i agree yeah 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 a couple of small things for me then yeah one thing that occurred to me somebody i saw somebody say something about um a fragrance he said i'm not sure if this will make it to the eight at the eight hour mark hmm. uh, <laughs> sort of, what, <clears throat> How many times in your life do you really need a fragrance to last eight hours noticeably? Mm. I mean, what are you doing? Like, if you wear it to work in the morning, yeah. uh, how many times you, you're what you're going mm. out after work to meet people and you still expect the fragrance to be strong? I mean, couldn't you surely? Mm. I mean, obviously, ideally, you'd probably go home and change, and you know, but you could start yeah. again and spray something else on. So, mm. or, or if it's you really can't, you perhaps could put it in an atomizer. So, the number of times when you need you know, eight hours of strong projection. I, I just don't know why, why, how does that happen in life? Or if, if you're going on a night out and you've sprayed it at seven o'clock in the evening, you know, eight hours later is 3 a.m. So <laughs> it's gotta be quite a night out where that really matters to you. you. Must be really, you know, really going some. So I just find that's unrealistic. And I agree, you made a good point that it, there really is a golden period of only about an hour or so Mm. when you tend to project a bit, even with quite a strong fragrance. There's probably exceptions, mm. but mm. I've noticed, and I've got a few compliments lately, and it's always been in the first hour after I've sprayed it, because I, okay. I got one in the supermarket from the check here, because I, got, I was going in the car, mm. and I just sprayed on something, and it, because mm. that for that hour, it's beasting out. I went for the walk the other day, and a woman's mm. little horrible yapping dog <laughs> aggressively came up to me but it was, it was so small it was no threat and I, I was I decided to be nice and say hello to the dog and it didn't bite me and then the woman <laughs> said something about the dog and I said I hope it's barks worse than its bite and then as I walked past she said oh you smell gorgeous and it was but again it was literally because I'd just come from my home and I'd sprayed on Agua de Colonia Concentrada mm. which is supposed to be weak but it's just mm -hmm. a very citrusy Spanish cologne. So the mm -hmm. notable thing for me, and same with the mm -hmm. Subway guy, the time that he really noticed was I happened to be testing the fragrance. So I sprayed a load just mm -hmm. as I arrived, got mm -hmm. out of my car to go and get myself. So it's that, that first hour or so is often when you get the actual noticeable projection. Yeah. And then after that, it, even a good fragrance will tend to come in a little bit, which is probably more appropriate for most situations. But if, if you're desperate to have that, that effect on people for more mm. than an hour, the obvious mm. solution is get an atomizer and respray. And, and then even, you know, Dolce & Gabbana, the one or something that's weak will still be pumping out. So you can make any fragrance strong if you want by taking it with you. That's what I say. Yeah, and also on your fabric, fabrics, you know, shirts. Yes, yeah, yeah. And 
the inside of the collar, I think, works as well because it evaporates slowly and it's mm. trapped between your body heat. Yeah, yeah, it can't go any. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if you're very keen on people smelling your fragrances, you can try those techniques. They work. Yeah. yeah. I never think. You know, I've never carried a decant in my life because, no. you know, it doesn't, bo- it doesn't bother me if I can't no. smell my fragrance past lunchtime. Yeah. Because I've already worn my fragrance, I've enjoyed it, that's about mm. it. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. Uh, but some people are not like that. And for them, there's a solution. Decant, as you said, carry a decant. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. I would wear a fragrance for what it smells. As I said, you know, yep. absolutely stunning fragrance. It doesn't last. But I wear mm. it because I love the smell of the fragrance. So yeah. I, I'm more of a, a person who likes to enjoy different fragrances, different times of day. So I'd much rather a fragrance last six hours so that I can wear something else in the evening. Yeah. You know? Yep. Excuse good me. points. Guys, discuss in the comments down below. I think those are they're really good, interesting points. And oh, one other tiny small thing that sprang into my mind as you were saying that there. Um, also remember, sometimes you may think that your fragrance has disappeared, but other people, I, sometimes other people have said, oh, wow, you smell good. And I was sure that the fragrance had disappeared. So be, beware of that too. It was. Yes. This one is a boomerang yeah. fragrance. Uh, I've received compliments on this 12 hours into wearing it. I uh, thought it was Le, long Le de Chanel. Le de Chanel, EDT. Wow. This is a boomerang. This is a proper boomerang fragrance. It comes back because I, I received a compliment late in the evening. It was about 8 o'clock in the evening from a colleague yeah. of mine. I yeah. thought it had long gone. Yeah. And I don't wear, never wear more than two to office on my clothes. Yeah, it, was, it sounds like it's not like you you just bathed in it, you know. No, I was completely stunned when she said, yeah. "Oh, you're wearing blue de Chanel, aren't you?" I was like, "Yes, thank you. Yeah, I am. Yeah. It smells gorgeous on you. Oh, yeah. Thank you." I was like, "What?" I applied it about six o'clock in the morning. Wow. On the train, and I'm getting a compliment at eight eight o'clock in the evening, and I was like, okay. "My God, blue de Chanel, thank you." So it comes back. This is a boomerang. Yeah, set. yeah. So my nose was deaf to it, no, nose blind completely, and she smelled mm. it. And she was standing as normal distance, yeah. conversation distance, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. Incredible. So, yeah. yeah. So bear, bear, that in, bear that in mind, people. Sometimes other people are smelling what you're not. And I think actually, I think it is a medical fact that the, the female sense of smell is a bit stronger. Am I, oh. So I often notice women pick up on things a bit more than men, which is yes. good news. good news if you are a man <laughs> who wants female attention, yeah. Absolutely. I think that was a great point you brought out because it happens a lot. Mm. You know, you stop smelling it, but people smell it, especially women. And, you know, it's yep. just stunning sometimes. Even weaker Olf- sounds. It's, yeah, it's, it's a very big thing, olfactory fatigue. You, you cook something yeah. in your kitchen with onions or something, and then you sit yes. down and have dinner. After a while, you don't think that the kitchen stinks of onions. But then you go to bed, you come back in the next morning, you know, oh, God, <laughs> it's stank. Yeah. Because you, when you were in the midst of it, you got used to it. But when you got not used to it in bed and came back, then you pick up on it again. So that, uh, that's kind of what happens to your nose. That's I the think. best analogy, yeah. That's the best analogy. I mean, it doesn't have to be meat or anything strong smelling. It's just a yeah. vegetable, you know, onion yeah, yeah, or yeah. garlic. Yeah, yeah. And just the whole thing stinks. And you're thinking, my, but what? You, yeah. oh, but open you, the you windows. Are, yeah, yeah, but you might not think that your kitchen stinks after yeah. you've been sat in it an hour later, but come back to it, or someone else who comes in the next day, yes. it's like, oh, God, what did you cook? So, yeah. Indeed. That's what I think. All right. Well, we'll leave it there. It's been absolutely great to yeah. talk to you. I hope viewers have enjoyed the subject. We're, we're kind of doing it, you know, it is not a short, snappy top 10, and so we've gone on for 40 minutes there, and it's a casual type of thing, uh, mm. but we, we, it's really great to have a bit of a different format for the channel and such an engaging guest uh, who I really appreciate taking the time out to have on the channel. I'm sure we're going to do a few more on both our channels, hopefully. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Dan. I think people have really enjoyed these collab videos. So I would like to thank both your subscribers and my subscribers for the amazing support. I think we're doing a great job. It's very natural for us to talk about fragrances that we like. So thanks for inviting me over. Absolutely enjoyed every episode so far, I'm sure. I'll be enjoying them in the future as well. And would love to, you know, just thank yourself and everybody. Yeah. 
this video. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and exactly the same. Thanks to everybody from me and viewers. Let us know in the comments below if there's any specific type of video you'd like to see us do together in the future. We, we'd love to know. Right, I'll yeah. leave it there, guys. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Um, so Thank goodbye, you fella. Goodbye, fellas. And <laughs> goodbye, fellas. Some, <laughs> time for my catchphrase. Remember, guys, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.